Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast. Uh, uh, Welcome, everyone, to the Surrealist Corner, where you see surreal things, obvious fucking Lee, okay? He's the Surrealist. And uh, he has a twirly mustache like Salvador Dali, woo, who was also a surrealist. And and when things get surreal, don't say you weren't warned. Okay, it sounds like like fucking Rick and Morty improv. I apologize. I was <laughs> I showed up to the boat and the captain told me it was the junior captain's turn to do an intro. But long time coming for the surrealist, long time fan, caller, supporter. Y- you know him by his real name, Christopher yeah. Lynch. Okay, uh, yeah. better, the best of the Lynches. Okay, obviously better than the act. Uh, Jane Lynch, yeah. we, 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 we don't know about her that much, but she's, she's smug. This, this man is better. Much better. He's much better. And, uh, much better. Clap for him. Hey, 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 hey. Daps all around, daps all around. Yeah, man. <laughs> glad, I, glad, glad I can finally pull up. <laughs> There you go. How's that for an intro? Yeah. Nah. Incredible, incredible intro. Incredible intro, man. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, good to see you guys. I see a lot wow. of familiar faces here. A lot this of rap fans has, in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. This oh, man shit. has made it out of hotline hell, okay? And he's here in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we was yeah. in purgatory for a minute, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They got they got banned. They took away my moderator privileges. You know what I'm saying? I ain't been on the Discord and shit, but you know what I'm saying? He's back in full effect better than ever, you know? For the, for the record, we don't have a Discord or Reddit or any of that, but if fans want to launch one, that'd be cool, you know? that that's we, You have our permission because yeah, we're not going to do it because we don't want to be mods and stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, listen, first time Put on the show. Put it in the ethos. Oh yeah, eat. Oh, that's one of AP English words. Uh, I remember it. ethos, pathos, yeah. logos. Okay, shout out to my AP English teacher. But this I... ain't about her. Okay, this is uh, this is uh, about Chief Keith and the Surrealist. Okay, who's in the building? We're all at the gas station here tonight. Okay. Yep. Uh, you know, I'll just start randomly. Surrealists, are there any sit go locations around you? No. Okay, not wow. a single one. I had no idea what Sicko was when I heard there, the song. There were a couple in New York <laughs> when I lived there. I haven't seen any out here in LA. Yeah, there used yeah. to be a, yeah, a maybe lot. Maybe it's a East Coast, Midwest. Yeah. It, it was for sure a Midwest thing because I grew up seeing a lot of Sickos, but they got phased out. So I don't know. They they must have got bought out one of them corporate Bro, versions, had- you know. Sitgo, we had Exxon, mm-hmm. we had Sunoco, we had BP. I mean, any kind of gas, we had it. <laughs> that's that's yeah. incredible. But that's New York, man. That's the that's the mecca, the the middle of the country, right? The epicenter. I would only expect them to have every gas station. I want every kind of gas. If I go to New York. <laughs> oh, we had a Gulf station. You know, you know, uh, you, uh, the orange, the orange logo, a nice little Gulf. You know. Oh man, well, I know don't, New York is I, dealing with some orange know right about now. That. You know, it's. Oh, Mel, it's come on, man! It's not. It's that wasn't a joke. Matter. That was not a joke. I'm literally talking. It's a current event. I saw it. It looks like nightmarish over there. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they said it was clearing up, right? Like, ain't no clearing up, correct? Right? Yeah, they say a lot of things. <laughs> they do say a lot of things. That is true. But anyway, uh, mm. we're we're uh, we're at the sit go. Surreal is Mool's Mel, Chief Keef. All right, this is track thirteen. Uh, it's produced by Young Ravizu. But before we get any deeper, okay, um, we're not going to go through the rating system, even though this is your first time on the show, because this ain't your first time with the show. You know how the show works. But if, if you're bringing in any oh, new yeah. listeners that came to hear the Surrealist, hey, listen, if you want to know how this rating system works, go to rapbrankings.com, hit the FAQs, or go to the beginning of this episode. It's in the timestamps. It explains the whole thing. But uh would you like to provide any background information you have, like coming in here about your relationship 
with Chief Keith Music, or do you want to do ratings first? Um, yeah, I could get into a little bit of background. I okay. uh, I think I first heard I first heard Chief Keith on the uh, it was the back back from the dead mixtape, right, right around. Or actually, no, I'm sorry. The first time I heard him was the song "Bang." I remember my friend sent it to me, right, and this was kind of right after. Waka Flocka's Flocka Valley was real hot, right? And it was kind of described to me as like, yo, this is like a, this is like, imagine Flocka Valley, but like in the shadows, you know, like a little bit less hype and more mm. tucked back, right? And so, you know, you could kind of hear the parallels. I feel like less so in Bang, but like more so as the records went on. And I just thought it was very interesting, right? So he's, it's obviously like a super violent song, but you're not really if you're not accustomed to the language that's being used in a lot of that music, you know, you're not going to catch it. Right. And, you know, you have no idea what this kid's talking about on there, but it's a catchy record. So I heard that one. And then, uh, I followed up, stayed listening to the, uh, back from the dead mixtape. Thought that was just incredible at the time. Um, Mm -hmm. and then this album came out and, uh, you know, uh, Love Sosa was really dope at the time. And uh, God, what's the other the other song? I Don't Like was really hot at the time, too. But I just remember, like, this album kind of sucks, right? <laughs> Except for this song. Except for this song right here. And, uh, you know, so that's it. And then ever since, honestly, after this, you know, I'm a huge, huge Chief Keef fan. I think he has some really, really good mixtapes after that. He's even... Uh, I think it was last year he dropped Phonem, which was one of my favorite projects of the year. Oh, that's the drum with like the toy soldiers on the cover, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, I, I think he's just gotten better at rapping and better at producing and better at making music, which is crazy because, you know, he's not at the forefront like that. But if you're paying attention, I think his discography has a lot to provide. Facts. I Facts. absolutely agree with everything you just said. I mean, for me, <laughs> this album was the jumping off point because of records like the one we're about to review and Love Sosa mm-hmm. in, you know, me becoming more interested in what he was doing and finding what he was doing more interesting than something like I don't like, which I like, but I never liked to the degree I felt like other people liked it at the time mm. okay gotcha mild like okay <laughs> mild appreciation for morals <laughs> for i don't like but i agree with i mean I've, I've been saying it all night and and the surreal has just confirmed it it's only up from here after this album you know this is like yeah it's a jumping off point he gets better so you know we were saying this back when we reviewed back from the dead in the mixtape season on patreon like Stick with it because it ends up worth it. It's like when people always recommend TV shows. It's like, oh, well, you know, the first season is kind of slow, but then, you know, like, that's the Chief Keef experience, at least from my perspective, you know? So, um, for sure. Yeah, we're, we're still in the, in the beginning. I mean, there's joints on this album, but like after this point is when it really, he gets more interesting. He gets better. He, it just, it improves going forward. So, um, you know, I, I forgot to say in my improv intro, <laughs> the reason why your name is even the Surrealist, because when we saw your name was Christopher Winch, we are like, oh, like David Winch, who's the Surrealist guy, you know? Now, listen, compared to, I'm going to say you guys are tied. You guys are tied in my book, okay, David Winch? Okay, Christopher Winch? Oh, man. Y- you're neck and neck, all right? They're equally you- surreal. Oh, well, thank you. Equally yeah, no. surreal. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 try to, I try to live my life. I try to live my life like that, you know? Word, word. Well, we appreciate it. We, it's what keeps, uh, what Wayne say, uh, what's the world without Enigma, you know? It's one of his best lines. But uh, we ain't talking about him. Uh, we talking about Chief Keef and Sitgo. Well, and, that's uh, actually what uh, Batman was wondering <laughs> in uh, the 1995 film Batman Forever. Was there an enemy called Enigma? Well, you know, uh, the Riddler's real name is Edward Nigma. Oh, and right, right, E Nigma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Bruce, uh, Bruce didn't want him working <laughs> at Wayne Enterprises because he was being a bit of a weirdo, and it led him to become the Joker once he was or the Riddler once he was fired. 
Hot take. I'm not going to hold you. Nigma is an insane last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's close to Ligma, you know, That's and we know about man. that meme. Okay, Nig- there you go. Yeah, Nigma is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's kind of hard. I'm a big fan of puns and things. My hot take is that the Riddler is on equal footing with the Joker and could even surpass him. But I think the big. Hey, OK. I like hearing well, that. You, you I feel was me? A, the, but... I was the Riddler Halloween that year, bro. Jim Carrey. Oh, you know, I'm like, oh, man, I got to do it for Big Jim. I, no, I got my hair. Jim. OK, I got the suit. <laughs> Full you know, orange. the jumpsuit with all the question marks on. I was looking like Matthew Lesko. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hard. It is hard. That is hard. Yeah, that's but, crazy. Well, that was my yeah. point, though, is it, the hardness of it is I think the reason he hasn't surpassed the Joker is because writing him in a compelling fashion is difficult because you've got to come up with, like, original good, riddles. you got to come up with good riddles. And also, you know? yeah, you it's tough. The riddles. Joker is universal. You know, the Riddler, this guy's real last name sounds right. like the N-word. <laughs> right. just, they can change you ain't that. black. They can change that. I don't think I don't think his that can't be his last name in the new one. Right? Um, that can't be his is name. it let me see. What was it? What's oh, the yeah, Riddler's but, name in the new one? What's his see, name? The, just the Riddler? The, the Riddler. Batman, the Batman. 20, the twenty twenty two. this, the that. Very creative. Well, this is the movie that Moors that's can't not, finish because the volume is too low. I can't fucking hear it. Uh, <laughs> it seems decent. I just can't hear what they're saying. Hey, nah, nah, it ain't. It's not worth hearing. Honestly, it's not. It's not worth hearing. You're good, you man. feel just me? You feel me? Watch the next movie. You know? Yeah, watch it's, it's I. It's I. They gassed it. It's. It was like a seven minus six yeah. plus, maybe flat seven. But ain't I was no seven not minus. Away. It's it's a five plus right now because I can't hear it. Well, a three oh, hour seven no, minus row is just it's too much. Oh wait, the ice cream truck is back? Sorry, surreal. Is this is this the first appearance from the truck all year? Not maybe no, I think uh, possibly. I gotta hit the drop then. Ice cream. How fucking original. Okay. Uh I have confirmation that his Fire. name is has been changed to um get this. Yeah, okay? better. <laughs> Edward Nashton. Okay. Fuck off. <laughs> Much that's no, nah, that's a better that's an actual last that's name. That's not a real like, name. Could be called that. Nobody's Nashton. last name. Neither's Nigma. Nigma's crazy. <laughs> Nashton sounds real. Nashton sounds real. It's a, right, it sounds real at least, you know. Nah, yeah. Nash sounds real. Okay. <laughs> Motherfucker. I should be the fucking Riddler. <laughs> you know, me and that. Scott, we would do all kinds of ribs. Asking people questions in the line. The Ribbler. <laughs> oh, God. The yeah, Ribbler. <laughs> Why not? Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so, obviously... Gonna uh, give the uh, for the oh wait we got a question here in the Zencaster chat. Do you have a delay? There is a slight delay, but I've already seen Mel be thinking this is why I got Junior Captain privileges in post. I'm going to shift it a bit so that you know it seems like we all in time. You know <laughs> that that uh that tinkering all right, all after right. the fact. I thought I could switch it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's a slight delay, but we good. We got gotcha. We just cooling with our youngest. Okay. Or, or Rabbins or whatever oh, remix I want to do. Uh, yeah, so you're here. You're the guest. So it, if you'd like to give your ratings first. You well, can hold do on. That. Introduce or, the huh? song. The song yeah, I did. Yeah. I did. I said it's track 13, Sit Go, produced by Young Revisu. I said all that. I did. See, see the captain, he'd he be showing up to the – he's one of those bosses that shows up whenever he wants. He don't know what's going on. Okay, we be working hard for him. And he just – he comes in. He's Vince McMahon, bro. He shows up to the live taping nah, and starts man. changing stuff. And we're like, Captain, come on. We... And he's like, oh, no. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's got, he's got good intentions. About, he's, he, his intentions are good. I'm thinking about, you know, uh, the the people who are, you know, hearing this out of context. YouTube, y'all know. Y'all know I already told y'all where we were. We were talking about gas stations because of this, you know. Sit go. Uh, hey, YouTube, if you're listening, call in 718-635-0743. Is that just City Girls Rab speak? It is, or actually. Yeah. Mm. 
Sido Sidogo. Well, yeah, it'd be it'd be Sidogo, not Sigo, but you can shorten it. Yeah, Sigo Sigo works. Yeah. Sigo works. Yeah, uh, call in. What's your favorite gas station? Okay, let us know. <laughs> All right. It's that shell. That shell? Okay, okay, shell. Oh, I'm good. That shell. Uh, listen, it's if be I shell. failed to mention shell, you gotta you gotta say shout out shell. Well, you know, Although, it's a valid question. Yeah, big I got beef with shell. Classic. To be honest with you, surrealists. Oh, man. What happened? What I like about shell is that they have uh, slush puppy machines inside. You know, I like that about them. What I don't mm-hmm. like is how come a gallon of gas is like. 30 cents more than every other gas station nearby. No, it's to, it's to keep the brokies away. So if you want to be in the VIP getting gas, you don't want to be, you know, around the people getting the three looking for the cheap gas. Be like, no, I want the $6 gas. I can be around the fucking, the, you know, where the baddies is at, you know? Getting I'll give you this. Shit. All right. Nobody's hanging around the, the, the Shell gas station by me. Yeah, they know better. All right. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I, I, you know, well, is it because it's a nice establishment, or because, or because, uh, just you know, it's a desolate area. It's, it's, <laughs> it's desolate. I mean, it's rare, you know, that someone. I feel like it's the kind of gas station where people are only going there when their gas light turns on. It's the first thing they see. Mm. Oh okay. shit. It's like a it's like a horror story, you know, like, oh, has this gas station always been yeah. here, you know, and it pops up out of the mist and it only pops up when you real real down bad, you know. But you go there to pump <laughs> gas, man, and you end up spending all your money and you have to pay it off and you end up working there and then you become the guy who you saw at the beginning of the shit who was all <laughs> emaciated and was like, oh, it's a cycle. Know. Anyway. You know what? Yeah. Before we, I just want to say because it all it all came together for me. Okay, new rap film, Sit Go, starring Chief Keef, directed by Christopher Lynch. Okay, we're Fine. gunning for oh. David Lynch. Fine, okay. and it's like yeah, it's the it's the gas station that appears out of the mist. Keef works there as like the the head guy. You know, he walks in and like we said, it's not for brokey. So like he when he when he's like, how much is the gas? You got to prepay, and he's like a oh, three hundred. And, you know, you're like, I don't have that. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. You know, and then he kills you. you like, huh? <laughs> you know? because, yeah, because it all, you know, and that's how he traps the victims. I like this film, personally. Oh, my God. The, the gas is 300 and you hit him with a ha, ha, ha. That's insane. Yeah, that's right? fire. I didn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't David Lynch's son be making movies? Or no, that's Cronenberg's son. I was going to say, if it was his son, I could try and use the name and get some of the rub, you know? Oh, right, 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 yeah. Does David Lynch have a son? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he has a daughter, actually, Jennifer. Daughter. Lynch. She's uh, directed mostly TV, but she did a movie called Boxing Helena in the early '90s, which is pretty interesting. Hold on, let me see what it smelled like real quick. Uh, Ain't 90s. know what it smelled like. Jesus Come on, get, I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I mean, okay, she. Oh, she's got the white people dreadlock thing going. Okay, okay, all right. Oh, all right. So it okay. smells like patchouli. Okay, can we rate the damn song? <laughs> We can, we can. All no, right, he uh, said she got the white people dreadlocks, and he said, "All right, all right, all right, nah, man, come on, nah, that's a nah. The dreadlocks is a nah. Y'all Hell know no, I'm looking milk, at it man. right now. This is crazy. Uh, <laughs> man, this ain't milk, man. This is not milk. <laughs> all right, let's leave. No let's milk. leave. Let's leave Jennifer Lynch alone. Uh, Christopher Lynch, <laughs> would you would you like to give your rating first, or you want us to go first, or however? Uh, I would love to. Okay. Nine minus. Wow. He loves it. He loves it. Yep. Okay. Um. I do. I do. All right, Mules, you want to go? Should I go? How are we doing this? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I can go. I'll give it a okay. flat eight. Ding me, baby. Oh man. Okay. This is tied um, with uh, solid. Love Sosa is my favorite on the album. Well, I'm gonna have to load a Maybe. drop in here because uh and listen, don't oh, get boy, don't get mad at me. Watch. Seven minus. Oh my okay. listen, the metal no, seven do, I, minus. Don't do that. Oh, okay, man. here we go. Jesus here we go. Christ. <laughs> okay. Listen, oh. let me t- <laughs> Okay, let me just bring in the Royal Watch. Three consecutive numbers, all right. To all my niggas that been living it up, watch you do. Let me just explain. Yo, that's my favorite drop, and I didn't even want to hear it. 
<laughs> wow. Um, well, hey, listen, I knew I was going to get this response. I know this is like a cult classic. It's a lot of people stand out from this album. And I feel them because I like it, too. Here's the thing. I've never been in love with the song, but it is catchy. It's really the catchiness of it because my issues with it have always been the mix. And I get it. The beat is supposed to be like very airy and floaty by nature, but I still wish the drums were not only more prominent, but more frequent because you know, we talked probably tonight, I'm sure, about how Keith has been a trendsetter for real. I feel like we don't get songs like Dream on Barter Six by Young Thug or like White Iverson by Post Malone without songs like Sit Go. Like, we Word. don't get those without mm. this. Hey, so you're a Trippy Red fan. I don't think we get the artist Trippy Red without Sit Go. Yeah. You could, Trippy, oh, sure. Uzi, for a lot sure. of these guys. You know, this is, we're at like. Yeah, Uzi, for you know, sure. There's a bunch of Uzi melodies in there. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Oozy melodies, these beats like. So, yeah, this is you don't get a lot of that without sit go. But what what's different between, you know, these later spins on that is, yeah, the drums are more prominent. And I, I guess I prefer that. Um, but the song is catchy. And really, I'll be honest, I'm singing or I'm, I'm playing it to, to sing the chorus like all oh, you bitches know I get dope. Papa Nick, so I Chris go. You, you, that's all. That's the only reason I play it. The verses or whatever. I'm here for this spacey beat and like Keith Mushmouth in his way through the hook. I, I wanted that's, to have a conversation about the mix because okay. it's definitely an mm, intentional okay. choice. It doesn't mm-hmm. not bang because the beat doesn't bang. Like mm-hmm. the, there's another world where this is just a more conventional sounding song. And the beat does bang. You hear the right. drums going at a certain point, but they're like clipped uh-huh. or something, you know, like they're in the back. Yeah. There's yeah. like a limiter on them or something because they don't knock, but it's not like Jay-Z. You don't know where just blaze is like, ah, man, it didn't knock. I had to go back again and do it again. This is a stylistic choice for me. Right. I appreciate the stylistic choice taken here. Because there's something like otherworldly about this to me. Mm -hmm. And I I really like the music. I really like the melody on here, especially like the chorus, Keith, all of that. You know, I, I think that like the only thing that put, I mean, I was saying like this is tied for me with Love Sosa. They both share qualities and kind of inform a lot of what I like from him going forward. But like, you know, I mentioned in the Love Sosa review as, quote, iconic as the opening, you know, threats and whatever dialogue are at the beginning of that song. I don't know if I want to hear it every single time I press play on that song. So like, overall, I feel like that's a stronger song that takes longer to get to the point. And this kind of gets right to the point for me. Not quite as strong overall, but they balance one another out. Okay. Okay. I just sent you uh, Macaroni Time, the original mix. Oh, snap. Okay. uh, The Sosa mix that's out now. Let's go. All right. (laughs) And, like, there's something in Sitgo that I kind of, like, identified as this almost, like, you know, trance sound mm-hmm. in it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mm-hmm. heard that buried deep in Macaroni Time as well. And I was mentioning in the background information, this and April Fools were like two songs that just took my fandom of this artist to a new level. I want to hear Macaroni Time. Nice. Just nice to fact. hear and, and to pay special attention to those sort of trance elements that are buried deep within. Word. All right. Well, here we go. This is a uh, macaroni time uh, out now on the chief Keith Sosa mix on the rap rankings. Patreon. Here we go. Boy, 
So we put the stars and that shit wanna love me now Uh-uh, talk to them now, I'm acting funny now Bop, 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 See me with the stars, now she wanna know me now Uh-uh, cause I told you now, I'm acting phony now Bop, bop, for a nigga, think it's macaroni time Couple bucks for these bitches, let me slap them on their ass Tough love for these niggas, think they next, I'm on their ass So what? Walking across my life, I got gotten mess Little boss, that's what almighty so forgot to say She wanna be a glory girl, but she don't like my glory guys I know this bitch is got she wanna me, my mama never, uh, uh I got a QP, a earth roller, let's get high, light it up And I guarantee that you gon' touch the sky He say he get money, but I know that that's a lie I see ones and fives in your bang well right now, but, uh, uh You ain't flexing, boy, you need some exercise, you cutting up You need some GBD lessons now I hear these niggas flex and say, you know the glory game How you know I say, we well, don't know your name, uh-huh Just thought I'd bite on the end right now, don't fuck Yeah, but you yeah. hear that 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 like sounds like a banger, but the mix makes it not bang. And mm-hmm. yet, I still find the song to be pretty addicting. And Work. I chalk that up to it's, it's a little more banging than Finado. Uh, oh yeah, but there's something about Keith's music where you know the rawness of some of the mixes i think actually work to the benefit of the records and you know as you were saying mel Mm -hmm. like earlier it's underground music even though it's not underground in the traditional sense there Mm -hmm. is something like there there's something kind of like not unfinished about it but unpolished about it on purpose that i like yeah yeah you know and what I appreciate about just when this song dropped and like what it is and his cat. Obviously later people will try to imitate this, but I never get the sense that he was doing this to be artful or to be different. It's just what he felt like doing. And that's what a true trendsetter does. Yes. But that's later the same on thing with like young thug in the best yeah. era when he was making music was before you know, they, oh, they love this from you or that from you. They love when you do this voice. Like, he was just doing shit and it happened to be crazy, like, creative and brilliant. But, like, look at (laughs) something like Sitko. To me, I've heard some songs, like, I think of Young Dro and even some of the stuff on, like, that Black Boy, White Boy tape where I'm getting, like, Mm -hmm. melodically or in the beat, like certain things that sound similar, but I hadn't heard anything that sounded exactly like Sitko when I heard Sitko. Now, right. you know, this mm-hmm. is almost like the conversation we we're having at the beginning of the season with young Jeezy, Thug Motivation 101. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what it was like hearing uh, track one on that album the year it came out and, you know, just a few years later, rap music is so saturated with those kind of beats, you couldn't even imagine hearing that and being like, oh, what? Never heard anything like this before. But and if you, you look we, at the... Do you think we got a lot more beats like Sitgo? What's that? Do you think we got more beats like Sitgo from... Sorry to cut you off, but more beats like Sitgo from other artists? Because I feel like... I like, hear I... Sitgo and, like, the Playboy Cardi stuff we've reviewed and the little Uzi Vert stuff and, like, you know, I... not one-to-one recreations, but, yeah. you know, we did that Trippy Red album on Rav Express. I mm-hmm. hear the DNA of a song like this in a lot of stuff, especially, like, SoundCloud rap that comes you after You know what? This. To that right. point, really. Well, I mean, I guess with... with uh... Sorry. I guess okay. with... Uh... I, I do hear what you mean by, like, the influence of Sitgo, like on these artists but with Jeezy you know that sound became really saturated like I could really hear it like all right people are doing exactly what he's doing and these beats sound exactly the same I feel like Fineto or I keep calling it Fineto but I feel like Sitgo yeah like it influenced stuff but you don't hear people 
this mixed choice, I don't hear this in a lot of right. in a lot of songs. From no, the, the opposite actually. I hear influenced it. Playboy Cardi, cheesy. for instance, blown out mixes on purpose. Yeah, and to that yeah. point, I was gonna say like when I heard Macaroni Time, some of those elements reminded me of this. You know, and it's like so the way things kind That's of progress, it's you know you get that sit go that airiness and the mix is sort of subdued yes. and then it's like now we're here where it's blown out and the drums are prominent and you have little traces of what of what was you know traces that's so, all but all right. i'm trying to say mm-hmm. is like nowadays if you played sit go for like a kid that grew up listening to like cardi and matt ox and like all these soundcloud rappers and triple x or whoever and you played them sit go and for some reason they had mm-hmm. never heard it it would sound so in line with the stuff that they've been listening to over the past five or six years. It wouldn't mm. sound revolutionary. It would just sound like at best, maybe a good song from chief Keith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but man, watching this stuff time. play out in real time, it's crazy to see like what felt like an outlier on this album in some respects at the time is, you know, in some ways like, a future blueprint for it to, you know, be such a common, at least like you were saying, like thread in other people's stuff that it doesn't even sound that out Mm. of place anymore. Right. And yet I still think the song's really effective. I think it's effective at being anthemic. And I think that, you know, to some degree, this isn't supposed to bang. It's supposed to sound somewhat disassociated. Yeah, it's like I mean, the, it's the victory lap on the album, you know. Right. I mean, it's placement in the sequence of the album for sure. It's like we we're, we're victory lap style. We don't really have as much to prove. Now we're just making things, uh, you know, because we want to make them. Hence the bonus track. Hence being so late in the album. But it finally actually hit me this week, like the spaciness. It's like, oh, he's high. Sit go gas. He was smoking gas, and that's why it's just like, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> like he's just out there. He's floating. It's, <laughs> It, it, it never like dawned on me until this week. I'm like, oh, uh-huh, that makes sense, <laughs> you know. But yeah, yeah, this is uh, it's catchy. It's just it's a catchy record. Um, the reason why it's only a seven minus is because yeah, like I the mix makes sense, but like I just you know it, I it's still, I'm getting blue balls from it, and also the verses. I mean, just more of the same as far as the content, the threats. I oh mean, no, no, I can't. The the verses this this is a song where he goes through and lists all of his friends and why like what his all his friends bring to the table. It's a song about having fun with his buddies, man. He names well, them a- all. He's like, oh man, Fredo does this, Tato does that. I do this, and that's why we do that. And it's a great time. Come kick it with GBE. Hell yeah! And like, and then it goes under the hook. Like they're having such a good time. Like. You know, you could tell he loves these guys. You know what I mean? And they're just having fun, man. <laughs> well, here, because that popped me. I respect that. But here's the thing. Specifically, one of those guys, um, Tato, this man, Tato, his, like, defining character trait is being on Molly, apparently. I feel like I've heard this four or five times on this album. Tato, <laughs> stay off the Molly. Is he <laughs> ever <laughs> not on it? Tato, Tato you know? nah, man. That's his shit, man. He's not right without it, you know? Yeah, Molly, Molly Water. He's, on, he's probably, on something. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> that might be my favorite part in the record, too, on that verse, on that second verse, how he comes in on there is, uh... Yeah. DB, the squad is just sweet on you, nobody. Like, I, I, that melody is really hidden. And it's an actual melody. I'm glad you said that because, you know, I talk with Mules all the time about how, you know, after this point in times, you know, 2012, as rap would continue to progress, we got into this era, thanks to like songs like this, but also like the rise of Drake. We got a lot of what I refer to as fake melody, Mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, you're singing, but it's not melodic. It's not catchy. It's just there because you feel like gotcha. it's what you need to do for the times. This is actually, yeah, like I said, it's catchy. Hey, a lot of Molly spazzing out in the party. It's that sing songy sort of, you know, like lullaby. It's got that same appeal of, of a love Sosa. I think they kind of, you yeah. know, are, you know, brother mm-hmm. and sister in some ways. Right. For sure. You know, so Keith was a was a trendsetter with that too, and he understood something that a lot of his imitators didn't, which is if you're gonna sing and you know be melodic, 
make it good, <laughs> you, you know? Um, so, yeah, that yeah. happens here. And shout out to his friends and his boys shooting up the playground and everything. <laughs> oh, all that. no, that's not cool. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's it depends if it's like the playground from like that Vice documentary where they jumped that dude and he was like, God damn, he was getting his ass whooped. Like, you know, there were no kids yeah. on that playground. <laughs> so you can shoot up that playground. But the obviously, fight back, nigga. Fight yeah, back. <laughs> that one, you know, um, yeah, it just hit me that that was like. Listen, I love this man as an artist, but that was Sada Baby style because he was like a grown man getting jumped into a gang at that point, you know, so it was kind of crazy. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I mean, that's that brother business, man. You, you, you feel me? Like, that's that man. But look, I'm not going to comment on a man <laughs> joining a gang at a, at, a, at a big age when I know I wouldn't survive in a gang, period. You know, so, hey, if he made it through initiation, you know, some of these 14 year olds, man. <laughs> they be these fourteen year olds be playing football and shit, you know. These fucking, I don't know, you know. That could have been that guy could have been twelve. You don't know what it is. Just had a hard life. It was Jay. a hard twelve, you know. You you know right exactly. So I'm not I'm not here to uh, pass Judge Mo on nobody, but uh, yeah. Uh, really, only other things I have to say about sit go are um. This is just Mel being wacky. All all week for some reason, I, I kept turning all these bitches know I get dough into rolling with the ride I get dough because I was thinking about like right wing grifters. <laughs> I was like, you know, they, yo, what <laughs> you go and join like Rumble or, or become like a Fox News talking head rolling with the ride I get dough. Oh, <laughs> that, it was, man, that was really it was, cool. guys gonna, is, Are you guys going? For I'm the, not building. Uh, no, I'm not saying I'm going to be rolling with the right get dough. Gets the gets the Patreon gets switched from Patreon over to Rumble, <laughs> right? Right. You know, honestly, yeah. I was thinking it because Styles, a friend of the show, you know, there was some news about Twitch about how they're trying to take fifty fifty splits and like all this other whacked out shit. And he's like, "I'm going to kick yeah, a Rumble," crazy. and I was like, "Styles, please don't go to Rumble. <laughs> don't do this, man. I can't. I can't. What if they're you. giving out the best percentages, though? What if they're cut? If Rumble's cutting them checks, you know what I'm saying? Well, you that was like, his oh, argument. Man, don't go work for Nike because they have child slave laborers. You know, like I right. guess they do. But right, if I you're feel a shoe him. designer. You want to work at Nike? Exactly. You know, so it's like he's like, look, I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm like, I feel you. At least go to Kit though, because Rumble has been tainted by certain actors. Like, you know, at least Kick hasn't reach that point yet so like you know rolling with the right i get though okay listen if, if i get to that point though Bro, shit. <laughs> y'all see mel on fox news listen they they dropped that boy tucko tucko carlson so hey I, I, they might have an open slot oh you take his place <laughs> as like a candace owens style character you feel me it's, hey man, if they handing out bags, like, listen like here, that, yo, yo Mel, these, how do you like this? Crazy, a Hannity America. and Combs style, but Mel is like the MAGA. Oh, <laughs> fire, fire, MAGA Mel, MAGA That's Mel, like, and and you got oh, you know, man. you got Lib Mules in there. Like, come on, man, don't you think this <laughs> Budweiser boycott's a little stupid? And you're like, oh, you libs, you libs never like it until <laughs> the guns turned on you. <laughs> Oh my I God. would I would have a personality like Shannon Sharp, but on Fox News, and like it'd be Maga Mel, and like I come in the next morning after the big controversy, like chugging Bud Whites, you know, and then it's like you know, and then I rip off the, the label. It's like I'm not drinking that, <laughs> you know. And it's like, and I launch into like a hateful tirade. Hey, I mean money. Okay, listen, I wouldn't do it for the record. I, uh, my black folks out there. Okay, listen, I would never. I would never do such a thing for the bag. I'm, but I am saying that in I these mean, dark guys, times, okay, the world don't feel like sit go out here. Okay, you, it's a much darker and less airy and happy. You, okay, so <laughs> you could also just go to Rumble and be regular too. You know, that's true. I could just go do to the, Rumble the show the same way and just be on there and just, just be, on, be there. on there. You know, not wilding. You know, it's yeah, right. Just, you could yeah. just go there and be like, hey, I'm not gonna pair any of these points. My my uh, peers have. I'm just here for the bag. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. eh, and they're looking for out. like they're looking for niggas so people don't call them racist anymore. Right. So you guys would, you know, that's right. That's the shit. You know, they're you looking know. for y'all. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that's for down yeah, the line. Hopefully, we'll Rab. See. 
Look, if Rab takes off, man, I will have see to see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Dang. There um, you go. Yeah. This but, is classic, classic MAGA Mel telling Styles not to join the platform and talking about we'll see. <laughs> I'm listening. No. Yeah. No, no. Just went behind his back and just uh, called. <laughs> that would be that would be wild. No, I wouldn't do that to my mans. But um, yeah, the the only other uh, the, the two other things is uh, there is a part in the verse that I appreciate. I'll be tired as hell, but my dick won't sleep for nothing. That's funny. I can't relate. There are often many times where I passed up on uh, touching me because I'm tired. So. You know, I can't relate, but the line is funny. And lastly, I always I, I have to correct this because in the info section, I think we talked about sit go and I was like, oh, it's that video where he's like the wacky inflatable tube man. No, I always confuse the video for sit go with I guess it's the love no thotties video where he's wearing the denim jacket and he's like waving his arms. That isn't the sit go video, but sit go <laughs> sounds like it would fit that image better. So that's why I guess I always associate like him just where just like waving his arms and like whacked out but yeah my bad y'all my, my Keith knowledge was off but I've corrected myself all right but no, I'll have to peep that I'll have to peep that video that sounds sounds incredible oh check it out love no thotties all right it's it's out now it's been out since uh, I guess 2013 or something but yeah you know those are my thoughts on you Sega. know I mean he's got some other music that is just mixed really poorly i'm trying to see which this mixtape is because i really like the mixtape but the whole thing is just mixed at like an insanely the 2017 deluxe edition mixtape there's some amazing music on there and just i don't know what they i don't know what happened (laughs) let me see okay i think i remember this dropping i mean i if i had to guess what happens is He's just at the crib, you know, and it's like I recorded and put it out, <laughs> like, put it out just like that. Yeah, God, you know, that's been me like every Cameron project since Crime Pace. <laughs> he's Man. just recording it and putting it out. Shout out Cam. Yeah, I mean, hey, he's doing real you good like with his, his basketball show. show. Yeah, his show. It's I see yeah. clips. Looks entertaining. Him and Mace you know? doing the uh, yeah, sports man, analysis. Man, they're funny. That's right. Look, That's right. Ask them where they get their sports takes from. Oh, brother. Yeah, we know. Sports mules, the ball knower. They get them uh, from you? Yeah. <laughs> my man. My man. You know what I'm saying? You heard a joke? Hell yeah, yeah. You get a little, we go to him for a little bit of. I'll go to you for some gambling gambling tips. You know I'm what I mean? I'm telling you. I can't listen, stop now. Go, you know, go with can't joke. Stop now. He, he ain't no joke. God. Joe Kick, I'll, I'll be sure. I'll be sure to go with Joe Kick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he made me some money last also, night. So. Another, yeah. Hey, there you go. Yep. Another gripe I got with this album, I feel like every person who goes from the underground and makes a major label debut, uh, Wiz Khalifa was on the major label debut. They're, everybody's first album has a Wiz verse <laughs> in, during this time. In this generation? Yeah. And he wasn't hot, like... Yeah, but he wasn't like hot like that, was, especially with rappers like this. You know, he had kind of moved on to make him. But I just, yeah, every everybody had one. It's crazy. Yeah, you know what? There's some truth to that. I feel like he was one of those guys where I, I think it's because they had successfully integrated him. I think the labels felt like Wiz, like they were successful in kind of getting him into the mainstream. So his new responsibility was to bring mm-hmm. other people in, I guess, you know. Like, I mean, well, you know, he's on Future's major label, like for Future's like Honest album, you know, he's on that. He's on, uh, he's on this. He is on Uzi's first mixtape. He's on this Babyface Ray album for no reason. It's just like, I feel like they just <laughs> throw him in the most I think random he spots. almost signed Uzi at one point. Did he? Yeah. Probably did they, but well, what, what's he, what's he on? Who is? Um, yeah, he's on, he's on Atlantic. Is he still on Rostrum? Atlantic? Yeah, I mean that's through Atlantic, I think. Yeah, it's gotta still be on Atlantic. I've never known him to be on anything else. Um. Yeah, man, he's got to be like the golden child over. They love him. They love him over there. <laughs> I'm sure he, he loves does, it too. They must, they must have some stat that's like 
you know, we got to get you a song with Wiz Khalifa to give you a little bit of crossover, or at least see if you can cross over. Do this one with Wiz if it takes off, you know, Fast and the Furious soundtrack. Here you come. <laughs> The analytics are must be showing something, you know, a correlation between a Wiz feature and some success. And I'm sure he loves it because, you know, more money for him, more features. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah. It's Wiz, like everyone who gets Wiz, called up to the main roster has to work like Dolph Ziggler and The Miz. Right, right, you know. <laughs> That's just their role is uh, cooling with the youngins and, and getting them acquainted. You know, it's not a not a terrible role, you know. Shout out to Wiz. Oh my God, when you look at his Wikipedia like guest appearance table, this is the, the like <laughs> this is comical. Yeah, uh, the amount of features this man has on this table is insane. Oh, twenty twelve specifically. Oh, th- yeah, yeah. No, the Surrealist is on to something. He he tapped into something with this. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. It doesn't even, like, I'm really like, show... It, 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 it hasn't been hot for years. <laughs> this is nuts. Yeah, shout out to Wiz, man. He works hard. He's got that, uh... Mules, we might gotta upgrade him to, like, dump God status. I don't know. He is there an no honorary... Not as a solo God. artist, but like as a guest appearance man, you know? Nah, nah. Oh, he ain't no dump God. What's a uh, dump God? Well, dump God's surrealist, we, we've decided, uh, you know, um, Mules, it was, uh, the term is originated from, uh, you know, the the, 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 the dump God. Who, who is the dump God? Is it uh, the God Fahim? The, the God Fahim, right? And uh, Makami. Mm. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they call themselves the dump God's. Because they're always releasing. A stuff. dump god is like Gucci, Wayne, Lil B, Mad Lib, Hamilton. Gotcha. Always working, always releasing. Gotcha. gotcha. That's what makes you a dump currency. Mm-hmm. Yep. Currency. Wiz doesn't drop oh, currency that for much. sure. That's the thing. Currency like, for sure. Wiz yeah. is just an industry dude. Like he's just busy. Word. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely he's getting. He gets a lot of work, man. He's he he. He gets a lot of work. <laughs> Dude, there's there's like a high probability, especially in the 2010s. You either got that Wiz feature, that Meek feature, that Fab feature, or that Nikki feature. I don't know how Fab keeps getting features. Man. Leave leave Fabulous alone, man. <laughs> Real, leave, leave Fab alone, dog. He's not that bad. He's not that bad. I know, I know the tone y'all talk about him in, but like nice. he was a good punchline 2010 guy you know yeah. or early 2000 mid yeah, early no 2000s good. guy not a 2010 no guy good. 2010s not <laughs> he's just he's good i have more time you don't like his uh, jada the so yeah you don't like the jada kiss fabulous freddie versus jason song i like jada kiss <laughs> i like jada kiss too oh brother Fab, uh, as as an artist, we don't really do artist rankings, but like he's like a he's like a flat six for me. I've never been disgusted by him, but I'll never be like a fan. I feel like yeah, you should have followed him on Twitter in the late two thousands, early twenty tens. <laughs> or is he going crazy on there? He was just. He was just proving himself to be a cornball. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, no, we don't We don't need that. But all rappers, you know, rappers... Rappers should have never got on Twitter. Like, These rappers no. of a certain age. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel that. I definitely, I definitely feel that. They fucking killed well, him. I feel like, you know, that. when you're on Twitter, you know... You know, you want people to be tapped in. You want them to, like, like you and all that. But, yeah, you're right. It definitely, social media has killed the mystique of probably just celebrities in general, you know? I used to think Fab and Jewels were They're pretty so cool easily back accessible. in the day. Jewels is cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Who be on, man, I can't, 
Yeah, he's going, yo, chill, 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 chill. chill. Ah. Nigga can't lose his teeth, lose your teeth, and you lose all your cool points at the same time, man, had a physical ailment. <laughs> You're right. You know, the fact that he hasn't been completely <laughs> written off after that means he has to be cool to some degree. You know? Um, I'll, I'll go, I'll just say this. Twitter makes everybody uncool. I don't think there's a way to be on Twitter and still be cool. That That's my take. It's not just rappers. It's mm. being there just, it, it, you know, you're either being performative for engagement or you're, you know, just doing whatever, which makes you look uncool because you don't have no engagement, you know? So it's just like, you can't, you can't be cool. It's just ain't no cool on Twitter. Man, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. When I, when I see, uh, when I see Fifth on Twitter bullying people, as much as I hate to say it, I'm like, ah, oh, man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, fifty boys. He's living the gimmick, the right? He's living the gimmick. Twitter. <laughs> you know, like he's being he's being himself to the fullest when he's when he's doing that. You're like, all right, I wouldn't have it any other way. If you just became nice guy, and not the villain, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same. You know, you scared yes. America. You know, we want to keep it keep that energy. Word, word. Facts, facts. I respect it. Well, hey, you don't uh, respect it. You ducked. I do respect fifty. You know, I respect fifty. No, he would respect me for 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 not trying to act tough and ducking when it's appropriate. Yeah, as as that nigga man, man, fifty cent was really just (laughs) no. Fifty cent was the friends we made along the way. You know. (laughs) Hold on. This man gave Get Rich or Die Trying a 74.5%. The seven oh, minus. Like, that's bad. Uh, like, that's bad. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not record. point away from the record. Well, it still made it in there on the, the rap. Mm. It's, on, it's in the record club because you rated it higher than me and it, and it evened out. Okay. That's Ain't no what matters. Even, okay. Oh, brother. What's there not to like on here, man? <laughs> I mean, let me see, folks, uh, see, what was it, season nine, episode <laughs> one? Get Richard or Die Trying episode out right now. Um, I mean, what were my... I don't want to spoil the Bloodhound. Review, y'all, ain't like, like, I, blood, y'all ain't like Bloodhound. Let me see. Y'all ain't like Back Down, Bloodhound. Come on, man. These are good records. I'm, I'm just going with the offshoot ones, like not the, not the huge joints. Yeah, Mools has 100% hey, My man. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't like... I didn't, I didn't like no Bloodhound. I, I was good on that. Uh... Gotta make it to heaven. I was good on that. Bloodhound's hard. Yeah, you didn't like I, gotta I, make it to heaven hard. because you want to go to hell. No, no, I don't. All right, that's that's not Damn. the place for me. Much like jail, I, I wouldn't survive. Okay, but no, no. I, I'm not here. To, I'm not here to gang up on you, man. I just I'm <laughs> listening to this. I'm listening to the. I'm currently listening to the Young Jeezy review, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna listen to this first song. You know. Ah oh, man, you know what I mean. It just <laughs> sometimes, brother. Sometimes, but it's all good. It's all good. Everybody's got their opinion on this music shit. Seven That's minus right. on on Sitgo. At least you like the record. Very thank you. At least you like after well, after see. some of the sins he's committed this season so far. I think it, we just uh, even a seven minus. We have to take it. <laughs> no, that's a fact. I was honestly, I'm glad I did this one instead of. Uh, Instead of some of the other some of the other ones, but I don't want to get I didn't want to give nothing away. My fault. I almost spilled the beans, you know. Like, you know, I'm glad <laughs> I did good. this tape though, as opposed to something else, because I just couldn't. I, I I wouldn't have been able to defend defend something else against the two of y'all. <laughs> oh, you're you're still booked for that. It's just not till season fifteen. Okay, shit. Well, I'm glad you pushed it. I'm glad you pushed it. A little, little, little bit of time. A little, little bit of time go. I got to prepare. I we, really got to show face push for it that, out of know? respect style, if you know what we mean. No, I appreciate Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Let's see. That's says, a good decision. That's a good decision. See, that's a, making a captain move, right? Oh, this review. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. See, well, this is why the captain is a captain because he understood it needed to be pushed back out of respect. He's right. Yeah, we couldn't have done it when we were going to do it. It wouldn't have been good, you know, for uh, the world. But yeah, uh, season fifteen, y'all understand what we're talking about right now. But 
the next time you hear the surrealist. Man, but until good that timing time, on the. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, I mean, is there is there anything else anybody has to say about sit go? Beautiful song. Everybody have fun with your friends. Appreciate your friends. Tell let your friends know what they bring to the table and why you love them. And you could be more like Chief Keith too. <laughs> Word. Well, hey, I consider you a friend. And before you go, I, I, I would like to know, or I would like for you to share what you bring to the table with the audience. You got anything you want to plug? Any anything you got going on? Yeah. Man, I just want everybody out there listening to to love themselves. I hope when you're hearing this, I hope that you're having a good day. I hope you enjoyed the guest spot and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. If this is your first time listening, you should continue to listen. And, you know, I'm sure you will after after hearing this. So, you know, bless y'all. Uh, great, great, great yeah, guest yeah. appearance from The Surrealist. OK, this is a man right here. Okay? Thank you for coming by. <laughs> Hang out with us for just a minute because we got to grab your audio. Of course. And of course. Uh, folks, we'll be right cool. back with. There's another track, right, Mel? Uh, yeah, two more actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're kicking us out. You know, there was a no soliciting sign at the sit go that we didn't see, and they're chasing us out with the shotguns. We got to leave, but we got two more songs to do down the street. So, uh, yeah, it's the realest. Thanks. Mules, I'll see you in a second. <laughs> and uh, yeah, keep listening to this finally rich. Review. Uh, bang, bang. Hey, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all of the other episodes, check the link in the description, stop by raprankings.com, or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. And please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting to help us grow the channel and continue our journey as hip-hop's first and premier extreme podcast.